but the weight, the, the, the style of leadership that I learned here through every single workshop that I came and through having great friends like like Jason, like I learned how to how to take in everybody's opinion and consideration and listen. I think that a lot of people don't understand the power of listening. And when you start listening to people and finding out what their concerns are, like hey, what motivates that person? Then when you figure that out, that's when you're able to influence that person. And by being able to influence that person, you're able to motivate that person. And once you motivate that person, you feel ready to do it. Thank you. Any other questions? Are you shy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Running against it, that they decided that when they, 
the election was over, they had a spot to fill, that they went to him and brought him onto their team. And that led to his progression, right? So Adrian then became his mentor. Uh, Satan then took on the leadership role of the next group, and then Satan became a mentor to somebody else who then took on the leadership role. And the point I made there is that you know you never know who's watching, you never know who's checking you out, listening to what you're really saying. I know sometimes in here, especially with all that noise out there and all that noise out there, you think nobody can hear you. But the reason why we come here, the reason why we meet, the reason why we have these discussions is because people are actually listening to you. And you are listening to somebody else. And that impression that is made upon you, or the impression that you make upon somebody else, is the most important part of leadership. And it is the, it is the guarantee point of emphasis when you want to build consensus. So when Saint held his meetings, you know, Saint was the guy who stood up there and convinced his team this was the right thing to do, even when it was the hard thing to do. In the early part of the semester that year, I think it was in October, they didn't make a decision to get rid of two of their members of the student government because they were both sick, they were both missing meetings. And that was a hard thing to do. They were sick, they were really sick. It wasn't like a fake thing. They had to make a hard decision because they were in important positions, secretary and budget and finance. And they couldn't move forward. They were, everything was slowing down. And they had to come together and make that And by the way, the two people who left never held a grudge. It was never a bad feeling for them. They agreed to it, they understood what the responsibilities were, and then it was a hard decision that had to be made, but they were accepted. It's, it's failed miserably over and over again in other administrations. But somehow, because he developed a consensus, with the group, and they came together and they agreed, including the people who they were going to get rid of, right? They were asking to leave. That made it all not that much better. So don't undervalue developing your consensus of a group. It's really important, and for us, as, it, as an entity of this college, with the demands on us every single day to do an extraordinary amount of things, volunteering, appearing at meetings, uh, representing the college and the university and across the county, uh, the community, and, and the the city and the borough and, and the state. Uh, remember, you are you are the gold standard. You are the ones who are like Saint and Adrian, my good friend George here, uh, stepping out here and really doing the, the job of being the representatives of Postos, of the Bronx, of the community. And for 11 years we've done that. And when we walk into a room, they know we're there. Not because we're doing anything bad, but they know we're there. And I, I promise you, if you have never been with us to Albany, if you've never been to us to the city council, if you've never been to us in a room with the governor or the race the governor, you should come because they know we're there. And there's a point of reference. So keep that in mind as you go through your uh, progressions. Keep that in mind as you develop your groups and your consensus. Because all of that helps. When you come in strong, you're making a powerful statement. You want to swear about George? Too? <laughs> George, is George is super intense. The one thing I'll tell you about George is that if ever I needed anything done, George was the guy to get it done. So George, in the fall of whatever it was, we had just come back from the monument in Washington, D.C. We had just won our first award. We had never won an award before. If we couldn't stay for the ceremony, we had to run back uh, because it was Hurricane Sandy, right? And then George and Gary, or another student from the academy, they decided we were going to go to New York in the spring. New York is super expensive and super rigorous. But George was intent. He was going to get us there. George went home. George brought in all of these things, and he started selling them and raising money for us to be able to like get a hotel room or something for the folks to go and do the thing. So then the cafeteria made a big fuss. They're like, no, you can't sell chips. You can't sell uh, vitamin water because we sell it, so you can't sell it. And they got the school lawyers to go out to George and Darren and say, you can't do this. So what did George do? George didn't take an easy grade. George went home and told his mother, we have to do something. And they made beans, right? Sweet beans. Say that. Habichuela dulce. Habichuela, yeah, that's it. And they, <laughs> and they started serving it up in cups and selling the beans. Okay, could you imagine this? So at the, at the booth, every night, 
every day. They were out there scooping up beans and selling beans because the cafeteria had been said they were making the beans. The sweet beans that his mom made. So that's how intent he was on getting this done. And they, were, they only made it like $1,000. But that was an intent, that was a large amount of money at the time. Especially when you tell everyone you can't sell it. Right? So they just took everything away. They wouldn't even let them sell coffee. Right? Because we sell coffee, the whole thing. But that, that's the kind of person that George is. And uh, if you get to talk to him, you'll understand how very intense he is. He's a very intense guy. <laughs> <laughs> but we love him. So um, I want to thank Saint. Yeah.